hey everybody welcome back i have got a new project that i'm about to start on today and i am super pumped but just kind of just get you up to speed with what's going on here as many of you know i do a lot of work with robots in fact most of my filming is actually on robots and all the robots that i have that i use in my studio most of them are home built systems now with so many excellent offerings from various motion control companies why am i still building my own well, the problem is I want more than just a four axis kit and that's what most people create. So with the typical four axis system, you've got a slider and that gives you that sense of parallax. That gives you the depth and it makes you, it, it gives everything more of a three dimensional feel to it. And it really kind of pulls you into the scene. Then you have the pan and tilt and that's useful if you want to track objects. And then after that, adding a focus motor gives you the ability to maybe film multiple subjects at once where you're shifting your, uh, your focal point from one area to another. So maybe you're filming something up close and then you drift it off to a mountain scene or whatever you're doing. But nonetheless, you're still stuck with the same four axes, pan, tilt, focus, and slide. Now this is great for a lot of uses, but I wanted to do something different. When I started getting into filming plants, I really had this in, this idea that I wanted to be able to move around the plant however I wanted, and that I wasn't limited by only being able to move, uh, you know, in one direction with you know the ability to like track and aim and orientate. I wanted total camera freedom, and for that means I need at least six axes of control. That's X, Y, Z, pan, tilt, and focus. And with that, with those core six. You can put, I wanted to position a camera anywhere within a shooting envelope so I could really engage with my subjects. However, there's really no six axis systems just available on the market that aren't gonna cost you an arm and a leg. And I didn't have ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 to spend on something like this. And the few systems I saw that did look like they could accomplish that did not look like they were gonna be quite what I needed. And I just did not feel that they were a good option. Now, when it comes to controlling something like this, there's not a lot of options out there either. Uh, you have Dragon Frame and Mantis. Those are two software packages that do have a very robust motion control engine in them. But even with them, there's still going to be a lot of effort on your side. You're going to need to build a box and put all the drivers, motor drivers in. You're going to have to wire up all those motor drivers. There's going to be a lot of soldering. It takes a lot of time and energy to do this. I mean, it's not that hard, though, because I was able to do it. Well, things might have just gotten a lot easier for folks. What we have here, this is a prototype unit from Kessler Crane called a power block. And what this is, is this is just a standalone motor that's in a very heavy duty aluminum housing that has a lot of holes, cheese plated all over it to give you almost unlimited mounting options. As you can see here, this is a nylon gear that I printed that I have attached to the top. And I'm gonna be using this in order to pull a belt. Um, the movement is smooth. It can hit relatively decent speeds. This is not a high speed motor. This is something that has been geared for strength in order to move mechanical structures. And it all connects with just an ethernet cable, which makes the wiring very simple to do. Not only that, Kessler has also released new firmware that allows their Cine shooters to talk to their second shooter platform. So if you have a Cine shooter and you have a uh, second shooter plus or pro controller, you can now connect those two and you can now control eight axis worth of movement because you have five with the center shooter and three with the pro controller or the plus controller. Now this doesn't mean that you don't still have to sort out your own robot frame and quite a bit of the mechanical portions behind it. But if you're handy and you know how to use 8020 aluminum extrusion, extrusion, which is relatively simple to use, building a six to eight axis robot just got a whole heck of a lot easier. And as for controlling it, you can use Kessler's uh, most control software package called Chaos. This is available on Mac, PC, iPad. It gives you full control with beziers and curves over all eight axes to where you can make really nice, smooth, gentle moves and you can orchestrate everything together. And it, this is about as close to a plug and play motion control package as I find. It's, it's a lot like an Erector set, just way better built. So my friends over at Kessler Crane sent me two of these to see what I would do with them. And I thought there's nothing more I would like to do than to go ahead and give my robot auto a nice refresh. We're going to replace the pan and tilt with a Cine shooter macro. We're going to control everything with the Kessler power blocks. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring this thing into the next century. And to sweeten the deal, they generously agreed to help sponsor this retrofit in order to bring this in to start working with Unreal Engine to turn this into a very powerful virtual production filming stage. 
So if you've seen any of my recent videos, you'll see that this is something I've been really pushing hard into. And the basic concept behind virtual production is that you're using either a display or a projection or an LED volume or a wall that will interact with the camera and track the camera in order to see where the camera's positioned and orientated to create an actual window into the virtual world that the camera can work with. This is not simply a static image. This is not simply a moving image. This really is working as a window to combine the unreal world and the world that we currently live in. Now, in this case, the tracking will be done with this. This is an HTC Cosmo Elite. This is a virtual reality kit. As you can see, I've already started doing some work on it. I pulled the, the headband off. I got rid of the ear pads because I don't need them. Uh, but what this is going to do is using this and some this tracking systems that are mounted up on the wall, I'm going to be tracking this puck which is going to be on top of the camera and anywhere this thing moves it knows that that's where the camera moves and with unreal having the correct information about the camera type sensor size a field of view and all of that it will project the correct background image i am so pumped about this this is going to be an amazing tool to use and i can't wait to have this done so let's get started There are several different options I could go with. I looked into projectors, but the problem is there's a chance the robot might be get between the projector and the wall. And I also have to deal with light contamination issues, and in general, it's actually fairly expensive. The next option would be look at an LED wall built out of panels. Now, that's going to be even more expensive, and also the pixel density on those is not really made for up-close viewing. So the most intelligent choice for me was an 86-inch TV. It's the right size for the spot. It was inexpensive, excellent pixel density. I can run it at 4K or 1080p if I want to reduce GPU requirements. And it's also got very simple and fast mounting solutions that are readily available. Auto? Well, let me introduce you. You might have seen this robot on some of my behind the scenes videos. This is a total camera freedom robot that I developed back in 2016. And I wanted something that was gonna be able to get me to move that camera anywhere that I wanted within a nice shooting range. When building auto, it was important to me to build the most flexible system that I could. Plants often don't behave and will grow out of frame. With auto, I was able to stop a capture, make adjustments for the future, and compensate for the movement of plants, as you can see with this Nepenthes. I had no idea which way this would be facing or where it would be, just a basic idea to start with, and I was able to alter and tailor the move in order to film the entire thing. Ultimately, it was this shot that landed a contract with the BBC and got me working on Green Planet.
am so stoked by this system. Um, ever since seeing LED stages and volumes, I've always wanted to play around with something like that and be able to use it and bring it into my work, and now I finally have. Uh, this robot, it's no longer auto. There's so much of auto that was pulled away that now this one, I'm calling it Sarah, and that's for a six-axis robot arm. I know, really awesome acronym there. Way to go, me. Um, I'm probably going to be rebuilding auto on this other side here soon and also integrating that with Unreal. Um, I'm pushing really hard on this because I, I'm only scratching the surface of what's possible with setups like this, how much can be done. And with the updates to foliage and plants that happen with 5.1, that's huge. Right now I've been running with 4.72 or 2.7 uh, just because it runs a little bit easier on my computers as I learn how to do this. But now I'm starting to get better at it. I plan to upgrade to the next version. I want to take a moment and just thank Eric Kessler and his team for being so generous in sponsoring this. You know, they, they got the TV for me. They sent me over a couple of these power blocks. They, they sent me over another motor to do the lift mechanism on this robot. And I am just uh, internally grateful because this is going to become a really hard-hitting tool for me. In fact, once I wrap this up, I'm going to go ahead and be clearing all of this out. And then I'm going to start getting ready for another shoot, which is a paid shoot for a documentary that I'm working on. And I am really excited to get this going. Um, this was a long process. I know the video was probably about 12, 13, 14 minutes, depending on how long I blab at this point. But uh, this was actually probably about six weeks worth of time to get everything done. And then, uh, well, probably about three weeks I had most of it up and ready. But then I was trying to get this shoot up and going. I had a couple false starts with some of the mushrooms, but finally got everything going. I love the kind of apocalyptic kind of scene. I love that I can create this environment that's where plants can retake uh, retake the elements, or I can just turn it into a kitchen, or I can use it as an alpine forest, literally anything I want to do. This is going to be an amazing tool for me. So once again, thank you everybody for watching. Um, I'm gonna, I keep putting out more material like this. I wish I could do this on a more rapid basis, but I have paid shoots and I've got paid engineering gigs that I got to do that take up a lot of my time and sometimes slow this down. But uh, if you're interested in something that's not going to spam you up too much, be sure to like and subscribe to my channel uh, because I don't do enough of these to probably annoy anyone. Anyway, thank you all for watching. I, I'm going to go ahead and get this cleared out and start getting ready for this next shoot. So have a good day.